with so much of the flight experience taking place online or at computer or kiosk terminals, the human interaction of many travelers narrows down to a certain group of people, flight attendants. This group of people are our focus on this edition. Plus, airplane manufacturer Airbus voices its concern as the impact of Brexit may hit its wing assembly in the United Kingdom. This is the edition this week on Channels Television. And a warm welcome to you and our flight taxis for takeoff. I'm Bukola Joe Kitumbi. Whenever they don the uniform, they're expected to appear prim, proper and elegant. In the air, they attend to passengers with utmost politeness. Cabin attendants came into existence in 1930 when a young nurse named Ellen Church along with Steve Stimson of Boeing Air Transport, came up with a new sort of attendant. Church proposed that registered nurses would make an ideal addition to the flight crew, as they could take care of any passenger that got sick. Boeing, then an airline, as well as a plane manufacturer, hired eight nurses for a three-month trial run. The new attendants, who would come to be called stewardesses, soon became an integral part of the airline industry. In time, these attendants were no longer required to have a nursing degree, but their nurturing, maternal character remained a key element in the profession. Until recently, Flight attendants were under strict control. They were not allowed to be married, and most airlines had certain constraints on their height, weights, and proportions. Their clothing was similarly restrictive. But in all these, their primary responsibility was to ensure passenger safety. Being a cabin crew is, for me, an embodiment of the human existence. Because you get to be everything at the same time. You are a, a potential doctor, a nurse, a midwife, a counsellor, a security officer, uh, a caregiver. I mean, it's almost about what human beings should be. The number of flight attendants required on flights are mandated by international safety regulations. For planes with up to 19 passenger seats, no flight attendant is needed. For larger planes, one flight attendant per 50 passenger seats is needed. The majority of flight attendants for most airlines are female, though a substantial number of males have entered the industry. I was working as a marketer when someone saw the way I did my duties, went about my regular duties and now said, OK, why uh, you should try being a cabin crew. And I, an opening came. I applied for it and here we are. In the aviation industry, everything comes around service. You're relating with people, you're, you're introducing your products to customers. So basically you're having a whole lot of customer uh, relations going around. So. For many of those flying this trade, it has always been a dream. Uh, I've always really wanted to fly as a cabin crew. I've had uh, a mentor that was a flight attendant with uh, Virgin, and I've always looked up to her. And um, I really wouldn't, I couldn't wait to be a flight attendant. I've always, always loved flying. That was like um, 2010, I saw the flight attendant. And my biggest achievement is uh, actually seeing myself was when I dressed, not flying as a passenger, but flying as a crew. I was so happy with myself. A dream whose fulfillment most times didn't meet family approval. The aircraft is an amazing, it's an amazing work of technology, so why not just find out how it works? And then I graduated, doing NYC, I told my mom, I'd love to be a cabin crew. She goes, no way. That's not gonna happen. You are going for your masters. I'm like, okay, no problem. Then two weeks later, she called me and said, okay, since you want to be a cabin crew, that's that's okay. Above all, a cabin crew member travels the world and experiences foreign cultures. 
Every single working day brings a new destination and new passengers. It's a job that is more varied and diverse than almost any other.